When dead plant material, or organic matter, falls to the surface of the soil, it's gradually decomposed by microorganisms. Nutrients are then released into the soil in plant available form. The next generation of plants then absorbs these nutrients, and so nutrient cycling begins again. We humans remove nutrients from this cycle when we take food from our fields, but these are easily replenished when microorganisms harvest nutrients from the parent material, the rocks and pebbles, and the much smaller particles such as sand, silts, and clays. At the molecular level, the parent material comprises large lattice structures which hold nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, boron, calcium, iron, and all the other nutrients that a plant needs. With a balanced soil food web in place, plants can control the nutrient cycling that's happening in the root zone. They invest some of the sugars and carbs they produce during photosynthesis into the soil in order to feed bacteria and fungi. This causes bacterial and fungal populations to increase dramatically. The bacteria and fungi then get busy harvesting nutrients from the organic matter and parent material, absorbing these nutrients into their bodies. Predatory microorganisms are attracted, and they begin consuming the bacteria and fungi. The wastes left behind by these predators contains an abundance of nutrients in plant-available form. These are easily absorbed into the plant roots. So the plant gets a good return on its investment, exchanging sugars and carbs in return for all the other nutrients it requires. This results in well-nourished, resilient plants and in nutrient-dense food for us humans. In soil, they are full of microscopic life, including fungi, protozoa, nematodes, and bacteria. But some of these microorganisms can be dangerous to plants, such as Fusarium, Rhizoctonia, Botrytis, and Sclerotinia. The best known of plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, also known as PGPR, in soil is rhizobium. Rhizobium function as fixing nitrogen by produce nodule in leguminous plant. For your information, there are another three beneficial bacteria in soil that fix nitrogen without plant host and live freely in soil, such as Azotobacter, Azospirillum, and Clostridium. As for fungi, the most beneficial species is mycorrhizae, which play a role to facilitate water and nutrient uptake by the roots and plant to provide sugars, amino acids, and other nutrients. There are a lot of jobs that are related with microorganisms and plant nutrients. One of them is soil scientists, which also known as agrologists, pedologists, and soil classifiers. Soil scientists do research the composition of soil to see how it affects plant growth. Soil scientists who work in the agricultural field studying the different compositions of soil and the effects they have on plant life, crops, and the national food supply. Soil scientists who work in test kitchens studying the characteristics of yielding crops, how they grow in different soils, how to control pests and the general chemical, biological and physical makeup of the ground and plants. They work to increase the national production of food as the need and population grows. I'm a soil scientist and a research agronomist. And over the course of my career, I've had the opportunity to work with farmers to develop technologies that allow them to do soil testing in their fields in seconds. Now, one of the instruments I use most commonly is called a portable X-ray fluorescent spectrometer. And in just one minute, this instrument can provide us with the elemental composition of the soil. Cotton production is common in West Texas, where I do a lot of my research. Now, all different plants need certain plant essential elements like calcium, magnesium, copper, and zinc in order for healthy growth. Farmers, of course, need to know something about the elements in their soil in order to make proper fertilizer and organic matter applications each year. Years ago, this meant going to the field and collecting soil samples and bringing them back to the lab for analysis. Of course, this takes lots of time. While our spectrometer doesn't eliminate the need for that type of testing, it does provide us with rapid analytical results in the field. Now, one question you may have is, how do we know if the results from the spectrometer are accurate? In fact, there have been multiple research studies shown that lab data aligns very well with the data produced by the spectrometer. It's a lot like a physician ordering a rapid strep test if you show signs of strep throat. Rapid analytical results like that can lead to better treatment. So, let's go to the field and take a test. My colleagues just pulled a soil core from a cotton field. These cores help soil scientists understand what's going on deeper in a soil in the rooting zone. 
By looking at these cores, we can understand what's going on several feet beneath the soil surface. And utilizing the spectrometer, we can understand certain soil properties in the subsoil, like soil texture, fertility levels, pH, and salinity. By developing farming and soil science applications of field portable technologies like the spectrometer, my research team is helping farmers to optimize their agronomic productivity. It's also useful in developing countries where farmers often don't have access to traditional laboratory analysis. My name is David Weindorf and I help soil sustain life. One of the problems encountered in maintaining plant nutrients is soil borne disease. Although practically all these organisms are beneficial to plants, a small number of them can disturb the normal functions of the plant, thereby causing plant disease. Microorganisms that cause this disease are called soil-borne plant pathogens and the disease are classified as soil-borne disease. As the organism causing disease spend all or part of their life cycle in the soil, there are several general symptoms typically associated with soil borne disease. Many of the symptoms occur first on the roots or the basal stem as these are the plant organs directly in contact with the soil. Nematode cause lesion or deformation of fruit. Fungi cause necrosis tissue rot or cankers. Some pathogens have a direct effect on the quality of the harvested plant. There are three ways to control soil borne disease. First of all, clean up all garden debris at the end of the season. Second, rotate where you plant vegetables in the same family. Last but not least, some annually occurring fungal problems that can be prevented by treating with sulfur or copper early in the season. The work. Technologies that have the potential to replace soil on a commercial scale include hydroponics. Hydroponic crops are grown in unmixed substrates with nutrient solutions in water being offered to the roots at controlled intervals or as a constant flow. The various cases of hydroponics include ebb and flow, nutrient flame technique and FT, as well as aquaponics, which combines fish farming and crop growth into one closed food system.